Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. Today we're going to check out this really sweet 2016 Aston Martin DB9 GT. It's absolutely gorgeous. Let's take a look. So this one's in for not a whole lot, just a service, oil change, but it is so beautiful. It's five years old, but has 3,400 miles on it. No, I didn't say 34,000, I said 3,400 miles. Everything on this car, all the clamps, all the bolts, it's like it just left the factory from Aston Martin. It's beautiful. It's here for an oil change, but we're gonna look around this car and let you guys check this thing out. And I'm gonna show you some key points on why you definitely don't wanna take one of these types of cars to a quick lube. Let's go ahead and take a look around the car. So this car, as we go around, you will find no flaws. There are none. It's like new, guys. I really like the styling of the Aston Martin, the really long headlamps on it. It's got a black chin spoiler, no scratches on it either, which is very surprising. It's got very pretty five-spoke wheels, carbon ceramic brakes. I would hate to have to buy rotors for this thing. Not going to be cheap at all. As you can see, it's denoted on the side. It is the V12. It has a six liter V12 in it. This is a convertible model, which is probably what I would have in this nice weather that's coming soon. Spring is coming soon. I'm really excited for it. Mrs. Wizard is too with her SL500. It's interesting how this door opens. Let me show you guys. So you push right here and it pulls out the handle. You pull on it and the door actually opens up, up in the air. It's kind of interesting how that does that. It doesn't open straight out, it opens up. And back down again. Kind of interesting. And we have the big wheels in the back. As you can see guys, no scratches. I don't even think there's a speck of dust on this thing. It's amazing. I really love the, the rear end of the Aston Martins. When you're driving behind this car in traffic, you don't say, oh, check out that really sweet Kia. No, you know that's not a Kia. In fact, it'll probably have you asking questions like, what is that? I need to know, what is that car? It's an Aston Martin DB9 GT. And again, down this side, it's actually pretty boring, guys, because there's no scratches. There's nothing but beauty, absolute beauty. And same thing around here all the way to the front. It almost looks like a catfish, Mrs. Wizard. And it does. As you can see, it has 3,470 miles. The same that's on the trip odometer. 3470, and that's it. You like that smell, Mrs. Wizard? It is quite divine. It smells like a millionaire's car, and basically is. This has an interesting mix of materials in this car. It has your normal leather, and in the center is carbon fiber, which also has a very unique display. It's beautiful. But on the pillars and on the headliner, you find Alcantara, which is kind of like a suede. And even on the inside of the door handles is the same suede Alcantara material. You can't really see it, but it's back there. You can feel it. And also steel, kind of like a stainless steel or a brushed steel. It is metal. I can feel it. It's cold. But it really comes together really nice. And as you guys already know, this thing's immaculate. It's beautiful on the inside. Here's a very interesting owner's manual. It's kind of narrow. Kind of neat how they have it. Maybe because it fits into the glove box properly. That's kind of neat. Here's our key. And it's got like a crystal or something on the end. It looks fancy. And it goes into the center right here. Wow, guys. Media restarting. Please wait. Anyways, let's, once you get the key in there, you can't even tell there's a key in. It looks like it's part of the dash. It's kind of cool. There's our park, reverse, neutral drive. As you guys know, this has the flappy paddles, as Jeremy Clarkson calls them. Go ahead and take that out. 
You like this car, Mrs. Wizard? I think you should get me one. It is absolutely gorgeous. Here's our cup holders. Not much room in the back seats. In fact, I think the front seats are actually touching the back seats. So as beautiful as this car is on the exterior and the interior, amazingly, even the engine is beautiful. Let's take a look. Now before we get started, we do have some parts removed for the oil change, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But other than that, look at that, guys. It looks like a work of art. The intake manifolds go off to the sides. It almost looks like a, a rib cage or something. It's like something an artist would make. As you can see, all the metal and the bolts and everything is like it just left the factory, like brand new. This is, like I said, the V12. It takes up quite a bit of room, but it also has quite a bit of power, and it sounds amazing. They're not too hard to work on. If you get these hoses out of the way, you can get to the serpentine belt, which is down there, down below. The water pump's not too hard to get to. But the oil change can be quite a hassle. So you can see here that we have a throttle body removed. The oil cap is removed because we're waiting on the oil to show up. But the oil filter sits down there where that oily rag is. We're waiting on the filter to show up. But you can see down there. You can't get to it from the bottom. There's no way. And with the throttle body in place, you can't get your hand or your arm down through there to get to the oil filter. And even if you could, where are you going to go with the oil filter? You can't even get it out. So you have to take the throttle body off, which is only four bolts, it's easy. You move this ductwork out of the way, you can get the oil filter out, it's fairly simple. Let's go ahead and raise this car up. And you'll, we're gonna show you guys why you definitely don't take one of these cars to a quick loop. As you can see, there's a lot of little screw holes and things because there's a lot of almost like armor plating to take off to do the oil change or any kind of service on these. And every newer Aster Martin that I've worked on has been that way. The story of an oil change or any kind of service on the bottom of the engine is bolts and bolts and more bolts and more bolts. And I believe because a lot of it is structural is the way they designed the car. But as you can see, we have aluminum plate and a plastic skid plate all had to come off and sitting by our throttle body that we removed is bolts, bolts, and more bolts. So before we go too far into looking this over, just think about it guys. You're at the quick lube and the young guy who has really no experience in a car has to remove all those bolts and the pan and your throttle body to change the oil on your car. And trust me, I have fixed a lot of stripped out bolts, stripped out oil pan, drain plugs, all from these places. Now they have their place, they're great for your Chevy truck, they're great for your Ford Taurus or whatever, but we all know it's common sense. You definitely would not take one of these cars to a quick loop, and that's why it's here, because the guy trusts that it will be done properly and no damage will be done. Let's take a look underneath. So as we can see, there's our fans with the radiator, and there's no leaks. We'll play a little challenge with you guys. Every time I say brand new, you can take a shot. Drink, what your favorite drink? The oil pan looks brand new. Those fans and radiator look brand new. The exhaust, it's a little bit discolored, but still looks fairly new. There's no leaks anywhere. There's really nothing to find with only 3,400 miles on it. But even these clamps look brand new. The hoses look brand new. I'll go ahead and check the brakes. The pads are like like new. Nothing loose. I don't expect to find anything loose. We'll go over here. Big Carmen ceramic brakes. 
nothing loose there, nothing leaking from the struts or the steering rack. Sway bar, bushings and link is good. Move our way back. This is just like the C5 Corvette that you guys just saw. The transmission is not right here. It's all the way in the back. And if you had to service anything with a rear main seal or anything going on behind the engine, it would be the same scenario that we just saw on the C5 Corvette. All of this has to come out and come out the bottom. So as we're going and moving our way back, I'll show you guys when we get to the transmission. Here's our cats. Here's some more armor plating. There's exhaust, tons of heat shields that also look brand new. They're still shiny. And here we are at the transmission. There's some cooler lines and things there. No leaks. Nothing going on there. Some more armor plating. More bolts. There is a small cooler right through here. You can see the tops of the fins of it. As we come around to the back side, I'll show you guys what that looks like in a minute. Let's check these wheels. Pads look good. Sway bar links and bushings good. Struts aren't leaking. Nothing's loose there. CV shafts, boots are good. It's not loose. Go over to here. Pads are good. Axle shaft is good. No leaking boots. Sway bar link. Bushing is good. Nothing loose. No leaking strut. Brake pads are good. Like brand new. And here we have our exhaust or our muffler. And you can see the cooler I talked about right there. So air moves right through here and right out the back. Then we have some black plastic and our exhaust. The tires are, like I've been saying, brand new. They look brand new. They got rocks and stuff all in them, but nothing serious. This car is past inspection because it's like it just left the factory. So let's go ahead and lower it down and then we can get ready to do the oil change as soon as the parts arrive. So we're still waiting on those. So like I've said before, when you work on these types of cars, you can't be in a hurry. The owner of this car is totally cool with that. He left it here for an oil change, but he knows better. You don't drop this off and wait for 30 minutes and pick up your car. After all the things we had to take apart to do the oil chain, that's not going to be done in 30 minutes. And the parts, we ordered them last Friday, and that was a week ago. They're still not here. They probably will be here today, but my luck it'll be at 5 o'clock at closing time. So being with the miles are so low, it might be its very first oil change. I don't think that the oil would be in there for five years, but I have changed just like Tyler's Lamborghini Diablo or the Countach, the oil was five or six, seven years old with only 100 miles on it. So it very likely could be this very first oil change for this car. So we want to make sure we do it right. Another reason you don't want to go to a quick lube, you definitely want to find a person or a shop who's not only repairs these, but is an enthusiast that loves these cars, who doesn't mind the inconvenience that the oil change is so involved. I have worked at shops before with the older guys, some of the older mechanics who have done thousands of oil chains on Dodge Neons, minivans, Honda Odyssey vans, all these different types of vehicles. They just drain oil filter, put it back together, dump oil in it, and kick it out. You cannot do that with these cars. I actually witnessed a car similar to this, a Porsche, and had one of the old guys in the shop that I used to work at do an oil change on it. And he spent the whole hour cursing and angry. He just wanted to punch a hole through the car. You can't have you can't have that attitude. You have to have an open mind when you work on these. You have to love these cars, and I do. So it's going to take a long time to do the oil change, a lot longer than a normal car. I don't care. I enjoy working on it. So try to find that guy if you own one of these cars. One of the advantages of having this big building here is once this car is done, we don't just dump it outside to the elements. It stays inside 
until you pick it up. It's away from prying eyes, hail, wind, ice, snow, rain, all the different elements. And there are some cars we work on, as you know, they can't sit outside because you'll have an audience all the time. Can't do that. It's one of the advantages of this really huge building that I was told that I'm an idiot for buying for people in my family. I don't think so. It wasn't me. No, it wasn't you. There was, I had, it was on my side of the family. They told me I was a moron for buying a building this big. I don't think it was very stupid. In fact, those very same people are, actually don't talk to me anymore now because they're like, oh, it worked. It actually, it worked. Yes, it worked. So the moral story of this is find the right guy to service these cars. Don't take it to a guy who's been working on Chevys all of his life. He will get so pissed off. He will call you and say, get this thing out of here. I'm tired of this. If you're curious what kind of tools we work on, no, if you, we were, we don't, we can work on tools. If you, if you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop to work on these or many other cars, they're listed in my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and everything that I use in the shop that saves time and saves headaches is listed there. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I really recommend you do that now. There's some really sweet projects. Some of them are still under wraps. You guys are going to love it. Thanks for watching.